soup. Yeah, well, I thought it still sucked, but ass. Sucked ass. I'm just going to keep that part in, cut everything else, and that'll that's just, be the that's cold open. Yeah, suck, suck ass. ass. Suck ass. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Soup. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Aaron, the Nerd Soup Monkey, and Nash, and we are no. back to talk about the world of Hollywood. We got a lot of trailers over the weekend because of the big game, or as we like to call it, the you Super Bowl. You can say the Super Bowl. You can say, oh, you just can't promote with yeah. the Super Bowl. So I can't put it in the title. So you can't say, oh, this is Nerd Soup talking Herbal. about the Super Bowl. No, I, don't think you, I just don't think you can do it like in like, an ad. Like if I'm doing an advertisement. And so give us Super an example. Bowl, you'd have Roger Goodell slam down our doors. Give like us we, CTE. We can't say, like Burger King can't do it like. Warren Sapp. They can't. Oh, say like, oh. <laughs> unless oh, they have what, permission from the NFL. Is that why they say the big game instead yeah, of Super yeah. The express written consent. Ah. The third highest uh, watch TV uh, program of all time. The Super Bowl. This Super Bowl. What's number American one? American history? Because that can't be right. I think it was... Because num- I think like Aston Villa versus Spurs just did like 300 million over the Oh, weekend. well, yeah, the United States. <laughs> right. Yeah, no no way. Well, I found it funny that more people tuned in for the halftime show. Yeah, there was an uptick. Right. Yeah, yeah, there was effects. an uptick. And then number one was uh, the Patriots in Seattle. That really should have been our cold opening, discussing that halftime show. Very we could, controversial. We could throw it back. Why well, yeah, was it controversial? Wanna... I'll throw it back. No, two cold opens. Two cold opens. All right, let's. Well, I'll redo in the intro. We'll we'll start with this. Uh, where, how did you think? You didn't like the halftime show, right? I didn't. Well, you I, didn't really hate it, but you didn't. Think no, it was but anything it wasn't special. anything. Yeah, it's like a second ice age. With these cold opens. <laughs> like in the words of Ted, it would be mid. She just and rightfully so. She was pregnant, but she just stood there and then, you know, she was indeed pregnant. And, still is. I've still, heard. yeah. yeah. I, if sources confirm, she is still pregnant. Um, yeah, we weren't ready really to reveal that, but she kind of took that on her own. But like, she just stood there, and there was like no movement, and like I said, rightfully so. But it wasn't. It, I mean, she's got bangers, but again, lip synced. Uh, I mean, was awful at it too. I mean, she it was wasn't lip syncing. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, she was. She was. It was a blend because a lot of the it was awful. Whatever she did, most of but it was lip syncing. Aw- I don't. That's never bothered they me. They said it's- about eighty five percent of it was. A stadium like that, dude, your voice is never going to carry unless right. you're um, Pavarotti. But don't make it look so bad. I mean, there was parts where she like put her head away and the words are still going. At least try. At least. I, I don't know if you got to take a breath for the baby, but <laughs> you got to keep going, you know? You're there for the Super Bowl. And I, I don't. I just found this out recently, too. I didn't know that they barely get paid. They don't even get paid. She was getting paid because of, I think, Apple Music was giving her like a couple hundred bucks. But that, the super time... Ha- sure, she got more than a couple hundred dollars. It's something like along those lines where it you was only... You do it for a, free, basically. Yeah, really. You do it for the exposure, which right. makes sense because every any time one of these acts performs, their streaming numbers go up, their sales go up. So it, it puts you in the spotlight. It's the biggest spotlight, at least in North America. So... and But that doesn't... It doesn't make sense why she did it at all. She's a billionaire already. Well, it's also an well, honor. T- touching the line of... Bill- I get it. It's something but that icons do. Hasn't, you know. When was the last time uh, there was something about, like, hasn't done or made a song in seven years or whatever the hell it's Dude, been? she hasn't released an album in seven years. Hasn't uh, released any new music besides songs that she's been featured on or the song she did for Black Panther. Yeah, and A lot she, of people wanted her to perform that. I, I don't... It, I mean, that's three strikes right there. I don't know why, and I, you know... I thought she fucking killed it. I don't know. You, you and Teddy are crazy. I don't like think you said, that, she has bangers, more bangers than I remembered. I kept on being like, oh, fuck. Yeah, she can. That's why it worked for me because banger. it was a set list where she was the star. It was a focus on Rihanna. She was up there being sexy, moving yeah. slow, moving with the groove. She had her. But they say killed it. Dancers. That's why I'm, I crush it even more. It wasn't killed. That No, by far was not it killed. Was better I'll, meet than, the, I'll meet you in the middle. I think it was better than The Weeknd last year. That's not saying much. Two years ago. Last year was the best one ever. Dr. Like, Dre, Eminem. Honestly, like that was it was fun, but like Rihanna plays better. Like her music plays better to stadiums. I feel like it does, but the energy of that hip hop no, yeah, show was I just mean, so fun. Man. It was that. That's uh-huh. why too. There was just no energy with it. I mean, Shakira and J Lo was like one of my favorites for personal reasons. personal reasons. <laughs> um, Talk about the cool dude. Rihanna's fucking like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
that one shot of Shakira still. Ron's still fucking sexy as shit. Like, I was watching that. I was like, pregnant? I don't give a fuck. Like, she was killing it. I'm about to start crying like Sirianni over here thinking about that Rihanna. Um, <laughs> thinking about that Shakira Where and Rihanna, she was just looking into the, the, the camera. I'm like, all right. Let's do this. Yeah. I but, but like good songs, like I think it flowed very well. Um I like the platform things, the way some of the like shots, like technically it was like pretty well choreographed and done. And yeah, obviously she couldn't do all the moves she probably would have done if she wasn't pregnant, but I still think she put on a really good show. I was never bored or being like, get this over with. It wasn't like Katy Perry. That was a bad halftime show. Is Funny it Mi- memes. Good for the memes. Yeah. Is yeah. it Michael Jackson? Is it Prince? Even Beyonce. You Creed? Know. Better than Bruno Mars. What do you do, like, three times? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like solo Bruno Mars. Mars he, she was not better than solo Bruno I don't like Mars. Yeah. When he brought out the drums? Come on, man. That guy was like an octopus out there. Yeah, he's incredible. But that's the thing. You have to go you into it the Bruno expectations Mars? of what that person is capable of as a performer. Rihanna's not renowned for her live performances, and I'm not saying she's a bad live performer, but if you get Beyonce, you know that it's going to be high energy, a lot of dancing, because that's how she's always performed. And Rihanna's more laid back. She just lets the music speak for itself. I just like Rihanna, so I think that's why I liked it. Mm. I like her vibe that she's very much she you guys are like grateful the, to be in my presence. She might oh, be like yeah. one of the coolest people alive. Right. She the way she right. carries herself, the way she acts. She's a big LeBron fan, so that's mm. a, always a plus in my book. So yeah, uh, not the best, but I enjoyed it. Uh, once again, I'm just a fan, and she's one of the biggest icons of our she somehow got me pregnant. All I'm going to say, she, yeah, she looked amazing, tested. too, by the way. When, uh, let me add that. She looked incredible. But I just Yeah, that stare half, was awesome. That, a halftime show has to be entertaining. It can't... I thought just, it was very entertaining. I, she, she didn't move the whole time. Where, 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 I need some where, energy. Where. I need, you were supposed to be moving. I was moving. I was working. <laughs> the songs are great. Money. I'm just saying it wasn't killed. It wasn't one of the best things I've Dude, ever when seen. She did the back-to-back Kanye's. I'm like, no way. Well, what do you think about the theory that he was supposed to perform with her before he came out as a Nazi? That sort of derailed it. Yeah, no, I think that's really... Um, it's that always hard. probably affected it yeah. a little bit. Um, that's Kanye's music. What's Kanye doing here? Dude, back-to-back Kanye songs. One of them is a, is a Kanye song yeah. that she's featured on. The other is a Jay Z, Kanye, and Rihanna song. I thought Drake was coming out at least because well, he was, she doesn't fuck with Drake. No yeah, more. she don't like Drake. Yeah, but he was there. ASAP Rocky would have had his shooters. He was in Arizona, so there were some rumors flying around that he might have crashed but, the yeah. stage. <laughs> without yeah, but her isn't permission. he boys with ASAP? I don't know, man. I like, guess maybe after that whole like you know, oh, you might have boned my chick. I'm not going to be your friend anymore. I don't could know. Be it. I don't yeah, know no, how no, that always... game works. But... <laughs> No, the rap game, they're always very cordial and understand. <laughs> yeah, and they, they could agree on a lot of things. Well, I knew Jay-Z. Agree to disagree, Built too. on empathy. Jay-Z said he would never do the Super Bowl, so I knew he wasn't coming out. No, if he didn't do it with Beyonce, yeah. that's the time to do it. Young B in the ROC, uh-oh. Mm. But who else is she going to bring out? Like uh, People said Santana, maybe. Is it Santana? No, not Santana. Who's the other guitar player who does... Uh, I thought it was Rob Thomas. Is it Rob Thomas? Didn't they do a song like that, him and Santana? Oh, Keith, Keith Richards. Mm, um, Jimmy Page. Well, she, we're just going to have Calvin oh, fucking no, Harris. Oh, no, no, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Calvin Harris is going to come out and push buttons. Oh, Buckethead. Buckethead. I remember ran Buckethead? out of guitarist. You remember Buckethead? I don't remember Buckethead. Guitar That's what these? they used to call me on Varsity. Buckethead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ball of Buckethead, bro. Yeah, no. boy. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Suit Podcast. I am Bo Oliver. Joining you today with Aaron, the Nerd Suit Monkey, and Nash. And we are back to talk about the world of Hollywood, mostly reacting to the trailers we got from Super Bowl 53. Is that correct? 57. 57. It's been that long since Super Bowl 50? Seven God years. Damn. Yeah, well, luckily it was a fun and entertaining Super Bowl, but I'm excited to talk about this. Got some big, big trailers. We'll talk a little U.S. weekend box office, and we'll take some fan questions. Aaron and Nash, thank you for joining me. What's popping, Happy to have you here. That was a chilly open. That wasn't cold. That was chilly. Yeah, yeah, it was. was nice and long. I imagine it's going to get people talking. Good. That's what we want. We want to engage and tell them to go fuck themselves if they don't agree with our opinions. I did that the other day. I forget what it was. Tell someone to go fuck themselves? Oh, people who fast. I was like, I hate people yeah. who fast. Go fuck yourself. And I was like, unless you listen to this channel. 
Oh, okay. And then I said, go fuck your mother. <laughs> so that was fun. But yeah, follow us on social media at NerdSoup, at BoSoup, at cool. Monkey at Anthony JQ Nash, and listen to this episode wherever you get your podcasts or right here on YouTube. Excited. I mean, where do we even start, right? Well, I guess we can talk about our reactions to the game. Like I mentioned, I thought it was uh, very fun and entertaining. A lot of people are calling it one of the best Super Bowls of all time. I either wanted Patrick Mahomes to put on an absolute show, come out and dominate, or a really tight game. So I mm. got option number two. And like I said, it was really fun back and forth. Jalen Hurts, man. If people don't know that he's the real deal, they definitely do after that game. Because oh, yeah. he was... That's one of the best games I've seen a quarterback play and lose. So <laughs> I'm a Giants fan. I never root for the Eagles. That's the closest I've ever felt to feeling bad because of how well he played. But yeah, it was a fun game. What'd you guys think? what do you think about the controversial holding call? NFL rigged. I mean, and that's not because like all my bets had the Eagles. <laughs> and I doubled down when I saw Nick Sirianni crying on the sideline. You admit That's it. how stupid I am. And as Chris Jones was crying, so I bet him to get a sack. He didn't get a sack. <laughs> um, yeah, I took that that uh, fan I went through duel. the house on the Kansas City Chiefs after I saw those babies crying. <laughs> Men don't cry. Chris Jones is on the Chiefs. Oh, he is. Yeah. Oh shit. Um, I don't. Miss. I hate Sirianni. So yeah, but all my bets, like you know, all my parlays, incorporated in Eagles winning. So that's not. I mean, was it a hold? Sure, but in a game, you're the whole game. You're letting them play. Yeah, you gotta be consistent. Any flags? I don't think you make that call. I really don't, and I think it robbed us of a great ending for a great of one of the greatest Super Bowls. And I know the argument is, well, you know, he he admitted it. Which, by the way, you take that to your grave. I mean, it's quite obvious that he did it. But. Yeah, I mean, there's a still of a grab for a split second, and but there even in the game there are plays even on Juju earlier in the game there are more egregious calls that you right. could have made. To me, that's just I don't know. That's th- that you decide the game on that call. I-, I think you just let them play like you've been the whole time. But still a great game. I think the Chiefs probably end up winning anyway. So that it's... pass interference on Juju was a pretty bad no call. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was horrible. Nobody tends to be talking about the first time out that Sirianni took when it was third and eleven to prevent a delay of game. Yeah. No, that now, was that's I I said it when it happened. I'm like that's why a, that's... Would, why would you do that? Uh, coaches do it all the time, and it never makes sense to me. But I would get it in the situation if it's like third and five. No, third, third and yeah, I agree. It's you know, like it's third and eleven. And the next play was a five yard out, I think. Yeah, chalk it. You know, chalk it up that if it goes third to eleven, it's going to be third and sixteen. Oh well, you're looking for a big play anyway in that situation. Um, I just thought that was dumb. It, it actually came back to bite earlier him in the, the game. Ass. He didn't call a timeout, and that led Andy Reid the challenge. It was the same situation where he let the clock run, and I don't know. Yeah. But overall, great game. Um, Talk about a fluke Eagles defense, by the way. Mahomes on his way to being the GOAT. That's People are saying that he might already be. I've heard that. I mean, it's Yeah, that was a big talk for the Eagles, is that their defense was super legit. Yeah, they were like four sacks away from the record. Yeah. Um, I mean, they play backup quarterbacks all year. You know. Yeah. uh, Easy (laughs) schedule. Easy division. You have to see the list of quarterbacks that they've played since 2021. Mickey Mouse, some might say. I mean, some of those quarterbacks that they faced, I don't even remember. I don't even know how they played in the league. No disrespect, but I'm like, who the hell is this person? I mean, the Eagles are fucking good. Everyone keeps saying that, but like... The way they played in that game shows you that they should have been there. And they were literally, you know, one play away from forcing that fourth down and having a chance to win the Super Bowl. Jalen Hurts, the way he was able to play, obviously that fumble fucked them over. And But you can always, like, you have that fumble, you have that punt return. I mean, the Eagles defense shit the bed, but when you, like, the Chiefs offense... Could have been better. <laughs> they didn't shut them down, but, like, two of their, you know, 14 points were defensive and special teams based. Yeah. So, I mean... And that's the difference in the game right there. One turnover and defense and special teams. So, And the Chiefs should have had another defensive touchdown. I I thought that was a fumble. It was very close. I thought he, would, he made a football move. Which is a devastating way to lose, though. Like, it was just so anticlimactic. I mean, the Jets lost from that hold. Like, I probably, I don't know. I would do what that Eagle fan, well, that, that was staged, <laughs> obviously. But, um, yeah, that kid apparently has, like, a YouTube channel. Oh yeah, oh, and he broke his TV. yeah, yeah. I, that would have been probably us in real life if that. No, happened. I would have like that's selfish. Cause you just ruined whoever's party. I would have just taken it out of myself. Well, the game's over at that point, basically. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been here to 
do oh, this podcast. Okay. All right. I see the direction you're going in. I'm dead. That's no, that would that be way. really devastating for a fan, man. How would you As react if that was the Giants? But, dude, even um, I haven't had that sort of heartbreak. I guess it's 04, but it's been 19 years since the Yankees blew that to the Red Sox. But as a fan, the Giants had the two opportunities in the Super Bowl that I was able to see, and they won both. With the Knicks, they're never in it, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and then those are the three main teams. That, so the heartbreak really came for the Yankees. So I've never had, like if I was a Spurs fan and I had to watch what happened with Miami in oh, 2013, yeah. that's a tough one because you they had the confetti ready. The trophy yeah. was there. They were putting up the ropes. I mean, we've it's had so devastating close. losses, but like nothing in that, like obviously in that environment. Where it's like one thing where it's like when you're so close, man, you're tasting victory. All Popovich's fault. That all, all those Eagle fans are going to th- think about for like the next five years is that holding. And that it, it, at the very least, it should have went to overtime. And you know what? I, I was thinking, I don't know why, but the first thing that came to my mind is, you know how mad Saints fans have to be? After not getting yeah. that that passing interference call, like what that was it may three be years one of ago? The worst examples of that ever, because of how blatantly, <laughs> like <laughs> how blatant at, it was. Like earlier this, look at the other way. Like a, all game, you let that go, and then that little turn that it bar- I don't want to say, yeah, it barely affected him. Right, the fact that they didn't call the Saints one, but they call shit like because it looked like he overthrew him anyway, even if it was. Right, well, the no, call was holding. Might have gotten that. I mean, it's before the line of scrimmage, but that doesn't matter when you grab the jersey. So right, it's it still looked like it would have been a, a couple yards. I mean, over like that, but... like earlier in the season, the Jets, the uh, roughing the passer that took back the pick six against the Patriots, that changes the sure. whole entire season. Yeah, it's one of the big. <laughs> <laughs> but like I'm just saying, like shit like that happens all the time, and like the way you two bring this shit back to the Jets is so funny, man. It, you know, it, you want to talk about heartbreak, man. <laughs> you guys, are you want to talk about heartbreak? Well, once again, no, it's similar to the Knicks. There's not heartbreak. <laughs> There's just depression. Bring it back to the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I love it but both the, ways. So. The Knicks and Jets don't. They're never in it. Oh, pause. I mean, you guys got close ish. But it's not like you guys lost those games and they were close, or right. I mean, the Steelers game well, was yeah, just you frustrating because you Big Ben just converted two, every third and down here. Oh, this year, right? Yeah, well, seven and three. Yeah. Oh yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, go go go, Mahomes. I'm rooting for him to get eight. <laughs> At this point, yeah, he doesn't need eight. I think he just needs to keep stacking up incredible seasons. If he ha- if he continues having five thousand yard seasons, well, that's, that's like the whole goal conversation touchdowns. in every sport. It's just so it's so weird and it's unnecessary. Yeah, no, like, it is, it is. Because like you can say Kobe Mahomes ruined it by Kobe. saying he wanted to tie Jordan. Yeah, because Kobe set the criteria that if I tie Jordan, I'm better. But and Mahomes, everyone's run with that since. I mean, it's such a team game, and coaching is so important. Like when you really look at it, like who's a better quarterback? Do rings really matter? Like greater winner, I guess. But like. From a skill, talent perspective, like, can you tell me that Aaron Rodgers isn't as good as, like, isn't better than Joe Montana? Because Joe Montana has four and Aaron Rodgers only has one. But, like, the eye tests and... But that, Joe, that boy Joe Montana used to ball in big games. Sure, and, and Rogers, it's a different league, but the way the talent-wise... He's had so like Aaron many Rogers, opportunities. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Just talent-wise, yeah, talent Aaron Rodgers, yeah. like... The arm talent and just the way he was able to revolutionize the position during that time as like how is how is he not considered one of the best quarterbacks? Oh, I think maybe he not is. the best winners. And when you when it's that close and you compare Brady and Rodgers, obviously you give Brady the edge because of the rings. But if Mahomes racks up four and look at his talent and the way he, he's able to play the position, one thing, one person I'm actually really happy for is Andy Reid. Like Andy Reid has gone through some like really depressing stuff in his life and everything, and he seems like. I mean, I might be wrong, but he generally seems like a really good dude. Yeah. And and that solidifies him. He's got to be in the top five coaches of all time. You know, he's had that reputation. Even though he had to, he's had that reputation all of his career that he chokes in big games and all that. And he always seems to get to the doorstep. And if he would have lost a su- another Super Bowl, I mean, you could have argued maybe. But at this point, you got to put him in the top five. You yeah, know? we were talking about that the other day. Where obviously he's not better than Belichick, but I think that if he gets maybe one or two more, yeah, the argument will be well. Reed had a lot of success even before he had Mahomes, and Belichick never found that sort of same success without Brady. Because you look at Andy Reid's record in Philly, they were awesome—six NFC right. Championship games, one Super Bowl, never broke through. 
But he goes to Kansas City. His first year there, he turned Alex Smith into a good quarterback. Right. And it was funny when Mahomes went down in that playoff game and they brought in the backup. Everyone was like, oh, look, anybody can run the Reed system. And they're like, no, that's the Alex Smith playbook that Reed is using there. That's just the genius of Andy Reed. Right. That you can plug in some bum off the street and he's going to be able to manage you. <laughs> Whoa, put, Chad <laughs> Henne- put some respect on Chad Henney's name. Oh, that was Chad Henney. Yeah. Right? Oh, well, yeah. And Chad Henney's not. Yeah, he's not terrible. He's been a solid time Super Bowl champ. Yeah. (laughs) That's so funny. Was he a Jet? No. Okay. He seems like a Jet. (laughs) No, yeah, he does. (laughs) You guys could have said yes. I would have totally believed you. (laughs) Well, we're getting Rodgers, so who cares? We're going to end up with Brian Tannehill. That's Kyrie Irving 2.0 written all over it. it. I want to see it. Really is. Shout out Jalen Brunson, though. That's all I care about. (laughs) Yeah, shout out JB. All right, well, these trailers, I mean, we got a shit ton of them. Or in the Super Bowl, so, yeah. yeah. I got a lot one. to say on Super Bowl commercials. Yeah, you weren't a fan. There, there wasn't neither one, was I. There wasn't one good commercial. No, I agree. I thought the Will Ferrell commercial Terrible. Was, was all right. It was fucking awful. Um, I really liked Danny McBride, so I was laughing at that. Oh, God. You're so easy. Uh, you know, it's these personalities that I stick with, you know, if... They take all my it's fancy. come to. It's like look you what celebrity, loyal. look yeah. what celebrity we get for our thing, and we have no substance surrounding it. Oh, here's your the celebrity you like. Heads up, Mr. T or uh, Mr. H. That's what he said. Heads up, Mr. H. Just the way he says it, it's just his delivery is fantastic. Yeah, they were so bad, and even the trailers. What's with this full trailer online now? You got the money. Show me the full trailer now. I'm wa- I'm watching now. I'm not going to go to my phone to watch a trailer during the fucking Super Bowl. Did you notice no car commercials this year? See, audio and in- uh audio auto industry said it's not worth it. And it's funny because there was a list of companies that spent the most on commercials from last year's Super Bowl. They're all down. <laughs> the stock price is all down from yeah, this time they make last terrible year. Terrible fucking commercials. Could be it. Yeah. Yeah. Throw some hamsters in a Kia Cube and. and- I think and also all these they commercials are online. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, it's, it should be easy. They release right? the commercials yeah. online Hamsters, now, cats. so ha- half the commercials right. I knew. I knew the Popcorners commercial before it was even on. Maybe I would have enjoyed that, but since I've been seeing it I for two weeks. I didn't see the Tuco thing, so that caught me. Oh, tight, 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 tight. Tuco cameo? Yeah, I was. Okay. Another, yeah, yeah, terrible, yeah, yeah. another, yeah, yeah. Terrible, another yeah. terrible commercial. <laughs> Wasn't funny. Tight. They rely tight, just tight, being tight. like on people being like, oh, Breaking Bad. I'm not going to get Popcorners now. Um... Yeah, just an overall. It's, Pop corners are. It's a it's a dead decent. art. <laughs> the commercial game. Would you say they take a celebrity and there's no substance? Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of the Flash, did you see the Michael Keaton cameo? Ah, I did. I was like, oh, somebody said, uh, somebody. Did, uh, I mean, the Pepsi Ooh, Zero commercial, was. so much potential. Terrible. What about the? Uh, what was it? The Miller Light and the that was a good commercial. Kind of threw that, you off. That a threw me. Bit. That threw me for a loop when Blue Moon came in. Yeah, it's a Blue Moon commercial. Like, Sad oh. commercials. We talked about that before. Dead dogs. Tubi was a good one. The Jesus commercial was so funny, dude. And Scientology. The TV went out during that commercial, so I didn't get to see it. There's a Scientology commercial, then a Jesus commercial. Was it <laughs> wow, the Jesus going gets head to us? Head, huh? Yeah, was Jesus it, gets us. That, I see those commercials. You don't see those commercials all the time oh, during yeah, the Knicks all the time. game. Yeah, MSG. Yeah, 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 MSG always has them. Where's Jesus it's getting this so money from? It's so weird. It's like, I'm back. We'll be back after this. And it's like, <laughs> Jesus gets us. Put fifty dollars on Fanduel. No, I don't get. Yeah, there should be like a disclaimer, like to do after the gambling gambling problem. Call one eight hundred gambling. After the Jesus, Jesus commercial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that might open up some gambler's eyes. You know, Jesus gets us. Well, that Jesus commercial was sort of like the boys A train commercial when he was making fun of the Kendall Jenner commercial. Yeah. How are we going to fix all these problems? It's a divided country. Is there a reason for that? Oh, I saw nope. racism the other day. Um, Did you like any of the movie pat trailers? myself on the back. All right, well, before we get to the second half of this podcast, we're going to take a quick break to pay the bills. And Aaron, you have a message from one of our sponsors, don't you? Yes, I do. For anyone looking to save money in 2023, let me introduce you to Mint Mobile. Oh, nice. Instead of paying an insane amount of money on your phone bill every month, you can select a Mint Mobile plan for as low as $15 a month. Dude, phone bills really... My phone bill is fucking crazy. literally paid mine this week. Oh, yeah? $140. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, I was going to say mine was $50. I need to bring it down, but holy shit. Yeah, I, I mean, I got to change, right? You need to get a family. Where do you sign up for one of these plans? You went to the Mint Mobile store? 
Stores? Come on, buddy. Let me talk to you about the internet here. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings onto you. I'm passing savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. So, to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash nerdsoup. That's mintmobile.com slash nerdsoup. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash nerdsoup. What is it? Mittenhole.com slash nerd soup. Bars. Mm. Okay, so the movie trailers. I mean, some of them, yeah, I guess we got a extended look at the Indiana Jones movie and Guardians of the Galaxy, but I'm not very excited. I mean, Guardians, I'm excited to see how they wrap that up. Indiana Jones 5, I guess it is. Whatever. In space. Yours the de-aging mine? is fun, but. What? Who's yours? That's yours. Oh, cool. Creed 3 is getting good reviews, so I'm all on board for that. I love the first two Creed movies, and it's it's cool to see Michael B. Jordan directing a movie and having it being well-received. So maybe that opens the door for him to direct more movies moving forward. Who's the other guy? It, please edit this out if it's wrong, but is it Jonathan Majors? Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is. Dude, he is fucking chiseled. He might be like... <sighs> Like, like, you know how we used to, like, look at, like, Arnold, like, from the 80s, like, just the presence on screen? Like, he might be that today. Yo, he is... I don't think I've ever seen anybody in, like that, in shape like that. His, his body is, like, incredible. Yeah, it's so funny. I want to get on the Jonathan people Majors point to, diet. Like, he did a video, sorry to cut you off, Aaron, yeah. where he talked about his diet. Insane. What he did to get in that shape. Oh, my God. And he's a little nutty. Mm-hmm. The way he talked about his diet, he seemed to be really into it. <laughs> no, yeah, sure. it's so like when you see like when like Chris Evans, like look what he did for Captain America, or Chris Hemsworth for Thor, and this dude just blow blows them out of the fucking water. Hemsworth gets pretty big for Thor. Hugh Jackman got huge for Days of Future Past. He but was like, veiny, but, but like, Majors is just so no, he, they he get looks like, like really physical. Yeah, they get like lean and like they deprive themselves of water, and that's how like they get all like he is just a massive giant human being yeah Yeah. somebody was like how is michael b jordan going to be able to compete with him and the first reply was like uh (laughs) like boxing or acting (laughs) (laughs) didn't they they said something about him he just really did like um recently a movie that was just like absolutely bananas like people like it was he had a movie so disturbing it was so good he had a movie in sundance i didn't get to see it though but a lot of people liked it he was like uh i think he like plays like a bodybuilder and he's also in ant-man so he's gonna have a fucking hell of a year this year huh yeah ant-man getting subpar reviews so far uh, i guess you guys can guess the one movie that made my head absolutely sizzle oh, yeah fast uh, fast I see fucking Vin Diesel driving down the Hoover Dam, and I wanted a fucking <laughs> dude. They're racing though. They're you bringing back the racing. Fucking run through a brick wall, right? No, no. They're I, street racing in this one. Ah, I want to scream. I hate. I and they're, they're popping even more celebrities into this now. They're all over the place. I think the funniest thing is them doing a part two for Fast X, when like and Vin Diesel came out the other day saying that they need they're gonna get another villain. So like, why is it a part two? <laughs> You're clearly having a different story for part two, so it it would only makes sense if it's a two-parter, if the story was the same. That's the one thing that really fucking pissed me off, too, hearing about what Jason Momoa said. What that he's say? playing like the like Dom Toretto is like the god, and I'm like the anti-god, and then <laughs> I said the anti-Dom Toretto. I'm like, are you comparing god to Dom Toretto? I want to... Dude, no way. No, it's we, not if, funny anymore. If you look at the God's movies... not bringing bit. in this money to the box <laughs> office. You know, it's Dom Toretto. <laughs> Dom Toretto... I can't. Dom Toretto sees God on the streets. Give me that pink slip, boy. You ain't doing me in a race. Everybody wants this franchise to cross over with Jurassic World. <laughs> Dinosaurs taking over the world. Mm. Bring in the diesel. Because at this point, I Jurassic World is just giving us the same thing every time. But they suck. Fast and Furious is doing the same thing. I didn't love Fast 9. For the most part, I think but they've they been suck. enjoyable. <laughs> so John Cena is just taking the Rock's role, right? Oh, very much so. Mm-hmm. Which I love to see. See, you know, John Cena's got his action moment, and Charlie's throwing what she's doing, and the Diesel's still the Diesel, and Ludacris and Tyrese—they're back and forth. They're always getting on each other's case, but mm-hmm. they love each other. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a giant. What was the ball? What was the? It was like a bomb, right? Yeah, just a giant fucking bomb. And then when <sighs> Diesel, when he pulled off that move. Mm. 
With the fucking with the hooks? Come on, man. Dude, no way. DD's putting those asses <laughs> really in seats, man. He is God, man. No, but if they did, like, a, Passion of the Christ made a lot of the box office, man. I think you're sleeping on God's yeah, draw. Yeah, but it's not a franchise. Bring back the GCU. <laughs> I mean, he did JCU. have his own trilogy coming back in yeah, three GCU. days. Yeah, GCU. They're bringing out, they're doing actually, I think, part two, right? No, they are doing yeah. part two, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Devil's going to be in it. The anti-Dom Toretto. <laughs> him, him also to comparing himself to Tolkien. Be like, yeah, I get it now. <laughs> we got to stop. It's so hard to write these, these, these me- mythologies. Mythos. Yeah. Well, I think what frustrates it's like people. like now Tolkien literally died. Vin Diesel, but. I like where you're coming from. I'm never going to convince Nash, but I think Aaron's warmed up to them too. You have to enjoy them ironically. He likes them because I hate them. But I think what bothers you and what bothers other people is that Vin Diesel takes it so seriously. He really does think that it's up there with Lord of the Rings. Yeah, like he's not kidding. No, he he, he 100%. Yeah, He brought home Brittany Griner, so I don't doubt this man (laughs) anymore. He has done so much for us. There's nothing he can't do. I guess he is God. I don't know. But I get such a kick out of how seriously he does take it because he was talking about who he wants to be the villain for part two, that he wants to get Robert Downey Jr. to play basically Elon Musk, a man who's obsessed with AI and driverless cars. And he goes, and that would be in direct conflict with the Toretto mentality. <laughs> so everyone got such a kick out of him saying the Toretto mentality. It's, it's honestly pathetic, but... It's becoming a cult, the fans of this movie. A fun cult. Yeah, this is joyous. Not like the Skinamarink cult, but... No, that, that will come 20 years from now. Yeah, a little bit. That's going to be the crossover when they get that fucking little phone car thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of wild, the Flash. We got to team up. That was a wild trailer. Ooh, this is where uh, the superhero fatigue, I think it's setting in for me because we talk about it so much. I Dude, don't think it's don't for the general shit. public. I didn't even buy my Ant-Man tickets yet. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's getting to that point. But like when somebody made this point on Twitter. He's surprised to see Michael Keaton's Batman. Did he watch the 89 Batman in theaters? He doesn't know who that is. He already knows who Batman is. So I guess it's weird that he meets an alternate Batman. But where's the surprise? Where's the shock and awe coming from? You don't know who Michael Keaton as Batman is. But even for me, we've known that this is coming for a long time now. So I guess maybe that spoiled it. But I think it was a well put together trailer. I actually think it looks like it's going to be a a competently made movie. Yeah, that's easy to do. But I was expecting the trailer to turn me off based on what I've already heard about the movie, where I, I see the trailer and go, yeah, I, I can see how that's going to be a dumpster fire. But I didn't get that whatsoever. No, it looked like pretty it good. It looked actually, yeah. I was going to tweet it. looked kind of hard. but <laughs> Yeah. I mean, even like it looks like they're going to take Supergirl and she's kind of going to take the Superman from the Flashpoint uh, comic and movie. Um, yeah, it looked like she was going through some stuff. So that... That's interesting to me. I mean, she looked fantastic as Supergirl. The one trailer... And seeing Michael Shannon come back as General Zod, who is probably one of the better villains of the DCEU, or even comic book villains, like, of the past... I will find him! Great line delivery. Just, That's your boy. Spit you love uh, MS. I like Michael Shannon, yeah. Well, love MS. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Putting a lot of shit on there. Yeah, wow, okay. <laughs> Well, he does. And he has every right to. He's great. Yeah. Um, Shape of Water. He's fantastic. Oh, back on Michael Shannon, not the disease. Yeah, and okay. Kangaroo Jack. Yeah. Um, he's in Kangaroo Jack? Yeah, he's the main villain. Oh, my God. He's been tormenting people for decades. Oh, yeah. And even, like, getting to see Ben Affleck Batman again. Yeah, he had the gray and blue suit. So, something like, I'm actually I love. excited for this. I guess it is coming out, so I was wrong on that. But for a while there, I was right. I mean, listen, dude, the way that all the behind the scenes for this movie has been Hmm. crazy and the fact that they refuse to address the elephant in the room that is the last two years of Ezra Miller's life, which were batshit crazy. And a lot of it was people making accusations. No, they've doubled down. They've literally there's two Ezra's in there. Sure. Right. (laughs) Which is so funny. I don't know if you want to un- unleash that power on the world, but yeah. we'll see how they deal with it. That's why they bring in the no, fucking Justice like, League. It's like Bob from Twin Peaks. Yeah. You needed a uh, uh, anti. Yeah, Mothra and yeah. Godzilla. It's classic. Let them fight. So you have good Ezra versus bad Ezra to balance out everything. Kind of like Don Toretto and God. And, well, and Jason Momoa. It's just such a weird person to give a pass to. Because like we've said, they've been in the news for all the wrong reasons over the last two years. And we'll see if it comes back to bite them. If maybe the Ezra Miller saga ends in a place where you can't look away. 
because they do something that's criminal. And they've been accused of stuff like that already. So all that's gone now? You know, <laughs> I don't know. It's a good kind trailer. Of like, kind of like it's the Joe trailer. Mixon of Hollywood. You know, Joe Mixon got in trouble for whatever he did. I mean, hit a woman. He, okay. But then you rush the ball very hard and kind of forget, make everyone forget. And it's like, right. no, that's not really how it should work. It's, it's but, yeah. Like it would be the Saul Hill test that you would like to say. If yes. somebody asked, well, I don't even know his name. Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller. If you asked Saul Hill, would he know him? You know, before this movie, before The Flash? No, that is Why a good Why are you giving point. this guy just a pass? Some people, uh, most people are still not very familiar. I mean, hopefully for the sake of James Gunn and uh, his undertaking of DC, everything goes down smoothly. But at the very least, it's a good trailer. But you do make a good point. You I know, don't even it's like somebody who's not... the Flash to begin with, so it's like... But also, it's it, not even... like somebody like Brad Pitt, where so much has come out about him and what he did to Angelina Jolie, what he did to his kids, that he was an abusive father, abusive husband. He's one of the biggest stars in the world. Nobody even gives a fuck. Right. I think there's... People don't realize that things that are discussed on the internet don't always get discussed in real life. Like J.K. Rowling's another good example of that. People in, that aren't chronically online, they hear that name and they think, oh, that's a Harry Potter woman. Oh, I love Harry Potter. Even, yeah. if, even if they think anything of all. Like, who the fuck is that? My mom probably doesn't even know who wrote Harry Potter. Right. You know what one trailer made... Ask her that. I'd be interested to... Call her right now. Don't, don't, don't. The one trailer that made everybody's like head snap to the TV for some reason, I noticed it was like 65. Oh, the Adam Driver? Yeah. And then, you know, there was a couple girls at the party. And, oh, Adam Driver. Ah! Oh, that's fun. Nice. Partying with I like that he's got that yeah. appeal. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Let's go, boy. <laughs> Kuka. Let's go, kid. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh yeah, what, 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 yeah. what? <laughs> what, 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 what? I'm cool. <laughs> that yeah, I think that, could, that has potential to be fun. Adam Driver fighting dinosaurs, post-apocalyptic world, but it's actually the future. Yeah. So, what else is there? Transformers, Transformers: Rise of the Beasts with Anthony Ramos and Pete Davidson. Interesting pairing there to lead a Transformers movie, and Peter Cullen's coming back as Optimus Prime. Mm. Did a you lot op- of people were impressed by the Indiana Jones. What were you going to say? <laughs> no, nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> were, were you going to say like, no. oh, you weren't available? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, although very good. I was going to ask Aaron if he liked the Pete Davidson commercial. No, it was another terrible commercial. Oh. Brie and Ham. We got it. Yeah, food names. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big PD guy, though. <laughs> no, he's like <laughs> oversaturated. I, I thought you were a big. A that's couple why of weeks I ago, you were talking about how you liked him before anybody else. I know, I did. I enjoyed the thing, but like now, it's every like you know who's doing that now, Jennifer Coolidge, and I like Jennifer Coolidge a lot. But you don't have to shove her down everyone's fucking. Wait, throat. have you even watched White Lotus? No, but you I just can't like her, complain. About I like that. her vibe though. But everything on Twitter, everything. Oh my god, Jen, Jen, Jen. We know she's like cool and like I like it. But then it's like the same thing with the Stranger Thing kids. Like everything, we get a good thing or we have fun with something, and just. Company is like, oh, everyone likes this person. Let's shove them down your fucking throat. Right down the gullet. God damn it. <laughs> and nobody... Choo-choo, here comes some Coolidge. And Sprinkling she... some Pete Davidson. Pootie Tang. She was in Pootie Tang? She was in Pootie Tang. She is a funny woman. And... She, yeah, but it's like... And then she gets doinked out by Finch in American Pie. American Pie, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, she's the milk. She, nice. drowned... she was drowning that boy. That's why. In the bathtub. Mm, yeah, that that's was right. like a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. They didn't even get no snorkel. Or I think that he? was truly one of my sexual awakenings. Oh, and American I was like, Pie. Oh, sex. Mm. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being born again. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you just got hit with like a flash grenade. <laughs> it's, everything's I remember coming this, to light. <laughs> there were two, I think one that sticks out vividly it was like a Tomb Raider ad in a magazine I had like on the back, and it was just Angelina Jolie. That will do it to you, yeah. Like, I don't even care about these baseball stats anymore. What's going on here? Mine was Aunt Becky in Full House. Somebody put, uh, jokingly, that Tomb Raider's Uncharted for people who aren't woke. (laughs) 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 Totally ironic. Uh, (laughs) But I I found that funny. (laughs) Because she is straight up just naked in those movies. With Daniel Craig. Uh, what else did we get? You know, we got some other bullshit trailers, like Air... Not excited for that Jor Gamble propaganda. Don't care. No whatsoever. Michael Jordan either. I mean, it's like they have Michael Jordan's mom and dad, but not Michael Jordan. 
<laughs> and also Phil Knight, like, fuck you, celebrating Phil Knight, piece of shit, garbage human being. But Animal Control, that uh, Joel McHale, I don't know, they they did a couple of Isn't that a show that's coming out? That. Yeah, it's a show, right? Eh. Um, and there was a trailer for Joel Strays, McHale. Farmer Wants a Wife, Poker Face, six, uh, Scream, Aaron's favorite. And Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves. People are really excited for the Dungeons and Dragons I show. Like that I should get I into D and D. It's a classic, you know. I would love to get into D and D. I feel like everyone would love that. It is a cla- That's like the classic nerd game. Oh yeah. You know? Well, Vin Diesel is a big D and D fan. Actually, it's gonna suck. <laughs> it's gonna be terrible. <laughs> what about Strays? Did you say Strays? Yeah. That looks like a cute little. What is that about? That's about dogs. Yeah, Will Ferrell's a dog, and the owner oh, tries right, to keep right, right. getting rid of it, and he does, and then he comes to an awakening that the owner doesn't love him. I don't know. Oh, that's really sad. I fucking hate movies where animals but have then, to like, suffer. But, like, the the animal, like, Will Ferrell's dog meets up with, like, a whole bunch of other dogs, and oh, becomes, that's like, a fun. street dog. That's cool. It's like Isle of Dogs, kind of? Yeah, Still I guess. makes me, it hurts my heart. Anything Zach else? Zach Breath and the other guy. What's his name? I'll tell you guys off air. That's another thing where it's like, oh, remember this funny duo everyone loved from Scrubs? Let's throw them in a billion commercials. Oh, yeah. They do those, like, T-Mobile. <laughs> so fucking annoying. Oh, yeah. Annoying. They were with uh, John Travolta. He actually looks pretty good. No, he looks better now. Yeah. yeah. It's like, holy shit. I'm going to get it and you going to get it and we going to... I'm a shine. What was the commercial mm-hmm. for? Uh, I think T-Mobile. <laughs> See, that's another thing with commercials I can never remember. It's like, wait, what, what were they for? for? Yeah, <laughs> never. But yeah, just I had to get out of my shining. face with that. I I need to work. I, I really, I think I should work in commercial. Is there another Burger commercial? Burger King, that? people got to take notes. That's the hottest commercial going right now. It's so fucking catchy. It's so good. And you, you want to talk about like a thing, how it's mainstream now and everybody talks about it? It's still so good. Like, it does not miss. Every time. I get excited every right. time I hear it. And then they do variations on it, so you never know which one you're going to get. Right. Single, double, triple. And then the international yeah. one. They do that. That one, I mean, they don't fucking miss. <laughs> you could never convince me to buy Burger King, so. Burger King, I'll, I'll debate this till I die. Underrated. No, it's actually perfectly rated. No, it's underrated. What fast food are you putting it over? I think it has How a place. How could you be underrated if you're objectively the worst fast food? I think I don't get I that. think it serves a purpose. It serves no purpose. There's so many fucking options their, for fast their food. Their fries are like underrated. Oh god. I think their fries are better than Wendy's. I think you, no the way. word you're confusing yeah. is edible. No way. Their fries are better than Wendy's. <laughs> it's serviceable. Yeah, it's you know, if you're starving in a the middle of the whopper, desert, a good sure. whopper. <laughs> yeah, give me a fucking whopper. It's a good it's a good treat. Look, a good whopper, but they, they even have the onion rings. Saying it is they like, have you onion rings. <laughs> what do you want? The same thing every time. <laughs> the one place I like, like Burger King, I like Office Wendy's. I like huge. Wendy's more than McDonald's, but I still go to McDonald's. Yeah, because McDonald's slaps. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. And I think the king, you know, the one fast food place that I'll fight to the death for that Arby's. It, Arby's. I've never had Arby's. I got a I like all the places the people day. make fun too. I frequent Subway. I love Arby's. Subway is overhated, I would say. Mm. It's okay. It's fine. Gets the job done I mean, when you Jared need it. put a number on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Separate the art from the artist. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You didn't, do, you didn't do great. He wasn't even in the kitchen. You think Jared was cooking up in the kitchen? I think he got lipo too. He didn't even lose weight in those subs. But, um,. That's Quiznos, you, Quiznos is gone now, right? But you it was, yeah. you no, know, Quiznos Delicious. was. Best. Remember those yeah. commercials? <laughs> yeah. Those commercials were our fever dream, man. I love them. Damn, I don't remember them. Eat Quiznos subs, <laughs> which are a dollar <laughs> off when you bring in coupons. <laughs> it was that weird looking. It made me even the eat or oil changes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if you great. saw the fucking uh, the guy, the Quiznos guy. There's a gremlin. Yeah, he was. Uh, <laughs> It was like a was it a sock puppet? I think so. It was a creature. Yeah, he, he those commercials were a fever dream, man. That shit was crazy. Yo, and they had like the slow little toaster that you can watch your sub go through. That shit was delicious, man. Blimpy, I never had a Blimpy. I don't think. <laughs> you don't remember this funky guy? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Now I remember. See, but it came up as a sponge monkey. <laughs> What's a sponge monkey? I don't know. Is that the Sponge Monkeys? Is that their name? 
<laughs> yeah, oh, these guys are great. I can't. I'm gonna watch it after this. Can you buy quick. one? Quiznos? No, a Sponge Monkey. I'll look it up. Buy me one. I'll buy you a Sponge Monkey. I can't believe that's the name of them. Jimmy John's is good. Jersey Mike's is good. There are better alternatives, Bo, but why do you go to Subway? Just now, you like a little Subway every now and then. Because it's down the block. Do you want a plush Sponge Monkey, or could I get you like a mug or a t-shirt? Oh, I want a plush, plush one. All right, no, down. but I think Burger King, being fast food, for it to be that just bland is disgraceful. You're fast food, man. Jesus Christ. I don't know, man. They're missing something. You just said you're fast food like it's like an honor. <laughs> Like you're no, it's than... it's like you're a you know. Uh, I'm not trying to be mean, but the bar is already so low. You know what's it's, so it's, the best fast food is horrible. You know what's so fucking delicious? The pretzel bun burger at uh, Wendy's <laughs> is out- outrageous. It. Go get one for dinner right now. <laughs> I, I will destroy my stomach. It is so good. I need to be good. better to my stomach, man. Oh yeah, I need some good bacteria. I've in been there. housing Taco Bell lately. <laughs> Sober too. Taco Bell's number one. All right, I, you know, I, I legit eat at Chipotle every day. <laughs> I think we're just going to skip U.S. Weekend box office and go to fan questions. Any other commercials? Trailers? No, no I mean, we Indy. touched on really the big ones. Like I said, Indy, not so excited Are for they that. in space? In Indy? Yeah. I don't think so, no. I think they're in the 70s now. That would be the timeline because uh, it's not the modern day. Is there a block party going on? All right, let's move to fan questions. E-40 underrated. Bro thinks he's from the Bay. That's for the fan to decide. Yay! People, you call up to the show, you better be ready. That's what you're supposed to do. Sitting there arguing and you're trying to spell your name and all of this other stuff. It's not your show, it's my show. I'm giving you the, the opportunity to speak your mind. Don't call up here unless you got something to say. Uh, this question here from Matt Jesus underscore Jesus Christ had Simpson. dreads, so shake them. I ain't got no, none, but I'm planning plan on growing some. some. Imagine all the, the Hebrews, Hebrews going dumb. Dancing on t- top of chariots and rolling tight ones. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the song from MLB The Show? Um, got her legs spread open like a field goal pole. Booty softer than a King Hawaiian roll. <laughs> yeah. Big uh, big subwoofer. Yeah, yeah big subwoofer. Yeah, hell yeah. I could walk and chew gum at the same time. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, I gotta bump that at the gym I now. Ain't crazy. Crazy. I ain't missing in action. That's such a good song. All right. Questions? Yeah, sorry. Uh, this question here from Matt underscore Samson. What What's TV death still bothers you to this day? What's something that like bothers me? Like, like TV that, death. I think Saris Barris and Selmy. That bothers me. That's a good one. Yeah, it bothers, bothers a lot of Game of Thrones fans. Um, I would probably say Ali from uh, Squid Games. <laughs> yeah. was the one that like I mean I was legit crying when that happened so but I don't think that Not bothers kidding. you like it's a, it's a it's a sad no, but like no, but, it's good for the show no like, it's fucked up what Sung Woo did to Ali Ali put all his trust into him yeah he jerked him yeah that bothers me a lot mm, okay it's so sad that he's just standing there and just that 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 drove me nuts nuts yeah in terms of like the story where I'm like man I, it sucks that that person died that really sucks. I guess the one thing, too, in Breaking Bad, the little kid. I forgot with, the name. With Game of Thrones, it's easy to say Barrison because that was a change that a lot of people didn't like. So, But in terms of just like uh, this death, I, I, could, I could never get over it. It's definitely going to hit me after we're done yeah. recording because there's some good answers there. <sighs> Anything else? There's so many with Game of Thrones, dude. I mean, that was the... The whole thing with the show is <laughs> motherfuckers but yeah, died. Yeah, like did Ned like maybe it bothered me that? Oh, you know what bothers me? Gale dying in Breaking Bad, because that would have been just the perfect scenario, right? Make your PB PB and J go to work every day, cook meth with Gale, <laughs> talk about poetry, politics, whatever. I was like, man, Walter White living good. Nah, that was so that was sad, man. I miss Gale. Fucking Jesse, man, I had to fucking ruin it. Oh, Bob the Brain too, and Stranger Things. That was another tough. Oh one. man, holy shit! That was, that one bothered me. A I've lot. totally just erased Stranger Things season two from my memory. It's Halloween, right? Uh, I didn't even watch the last season. Me neither. And I heard it's the best. <laughs> I heard the same thing. <laughs> I could. I watched episode one, and I'm like, I just can't with this show anymore. It's not. I, I thought it was a good episode. 
but I, I was just like, I'm not. You I, can't I, get engaged, I, I, right? No, yeah. There's just something about it where I couldn't get engaged. I agree. It might be the Aaron effect. Because I put that yeah. they're they're pushing those kids too much on you, where it's just <laughs> like I can't. Well, that's the thing. You know that it's going to end with L going like this, nosebleed, and the yeah, and the, L, yeah. Well, and then Joyce, Joyce, and then uh, Joyce. Nancy. <laughs> we get it. And Nancy, is she going to be with Steve? Is she going to be with Jonathan? Oh, I don't give a fuck. Oh, no, there's going to be a new Australian guy that comes there. <laughs> yeah, right. And he gets killed. And he's going to get killed off because everybody <laughs> yeah. loves him. Right, because she was in love with him, and now she's got to go back to Steve. And Steve wants Dustin some... I, I, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold the phone here. <laughs> Let's take it back. Uh, this question oh, here God. from Maz... Yo, Maz, yeah. If you could have any game properly remade as quality TV, what would it be? I mean, I, I, I mean, always... This is a frequent question we've been getting, so sorry to cut you off. Nash. No, Go it's ahead. all right. It's all right. I, I overstepped my boundary, but... <laughs> um, no, the one show that I've been pushing for to even be a movie, but if they could do a TV show, is Gears of War. I think so. I think Dave Bautista recently said that he would like to star in a Gears of War movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, if they did like a cartoon version of it, I would love Banjo and Kazooie. I would yeah, just, that's been a frequent answer uh, of mine, doing an animated Banjo Kazooie similar to Super Mario Brothers. The game is so good, man. It's just so good. I think it's got a lot of potential. I'm just going to talk over that plane. I think it's got a fun story. Yeah. You could do the little buddy relationship between Banjo and Kazooie, and you can open it up a bit, like what they're doing with the Super Mario movie. You know, a little groundhog. You can get him, then you can get Tui. You know, then you got Grelda. Or you Ron- really know the roster. What happened? I just need my boy Mojo Jojo. <laughs> no, wait, uh, he's not. Mumbo Jumbo. Mumbo Jumbo. Mumbo Jumbo. I confuse him with Grunty. Powerpuff what, Girls. What's the witch's name? Gronty? Yeah, Grunty? I think that's right. Gronty. Yeah. And then she had the uh, the cauldron. As their sidekick. Yeah, the cauldron was alive. Yeah, he was al- he was alive. Yeah, anthropomorphic. Damn, what was the name of the fucking mole? Shout out, Miss Buchner. I think a Red Dead Redemption one would be good, just story wise. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Aesthetically setting a nice little drawn out western. Bottles for people who don't want to watch Yellowstone. Yeah, we we need a western. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. That would that would be a cool one, but. That, I feel like, has to be on the money. Like, you can't have that be mid or Hopefully HBO picks 7. it up. 7.5. That'd be sick. Like, yeah, that's the worst with an adaptation where it's just good. It's just okay. Because that's one of the greatest games ever made. So you can't have that going in. Like, The Last of Us, I, I mean, it's highly touted. It It's praised, and it looks like the TV show is just going to be on the money, too. You got to so, watch that, man. You'll I watched like the it. first episode. Okay. So, I'm getting into it. You can take another crack at Uncharted in the TV format. Well, those those aren't coming to TV anytime soon because that movie made too much money, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but that's the Tom Holland appeal. And that was uh, one of the stories that uh, he's going to star in a Fred Astaire biopic directed by Paul King. So, that's interesting. I know he's a trained ballet dancer, so he seems to be a good... Uh, option for Fred Astaire but people were saying Mike Faced from West Side Story because he looks like Fred Astaire would have been the better choice is that the the it's the friend yeah Yeah. he really does look like him so but that Tom Holland man Marvel just made him the biggest movie star in the world or top three so he draws I just hope those Uncharted movies get better and uh, I'll never like Mark Wahlberg as Sully yeah there's <laughs> what do they say? Only way to go is up. That's Uncharted franchise right now. So, what about Glover? <laughs> Probably be. Like do you the remember worst. Gek? Yeah, Gek sixty four. <laughs> Enter the Gecko. <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking at buying that the other day. That's so weird that you said that. So there's a YouTuber donkey. He reviews games, and his Hogwarts Legacy review is just him saying, "Oh, I didn't know all the controversy. I'm not going to play it." And then he switches to another game that's controversial, and he's like, "Oh, I didn't know the controversy. I'm not going to play it." And then he switches to another game, another game, and eventually he gets to Gek. He's like, "I'm just going to play Gek because everybody likes Gek." Yeah. And then it's a cutscene of Gek doing a very offensive Chinese accent. <laughs> It's like, what could possibly be wrong with Gek? <laughs> and sure enough. 
it's so funny. But it was like a blast from the past seeing that, dude. I feel like I, I used to play you... that with no intention. Like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I feel like me and you played that together oh, yeah, when we were younger. Yeah, that was like the Snowboard Kids era. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All those old 64 games. Yep. The Toy Story game. They have those for uh, PlayStation. Did you guys have That's regular so Xbox? No. Did you ever play Munch's Odyssey? I feel like I've heard of it. Yeah, why does that sound familiar? Yeah. That was a while. I don't know why I just got to remember. I think that was like the first game I had on Xbox. Or like it came... Remember when they used to do game previews on games? Yeah. I think that was one of those. Yeah, you could play like, it for like uh, the first mission or like something Fusion like Frenzy yeah. was another one that you could play. That was a fun-ass game. What'd you say? Fusion Frenzy. Fusion Frenzy? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Feeding Frenzy. Do you remember no. Feeding Frenzy? Was that the shark game? It was like a computer game? It was like, yeah, but they made it on the Xbox where you're the fish and then you eat other fish and get yeah, bigger. Yeah, yeah, that was that, a hell of a game. That was, a, that was such a stupid game to get addicted to. I love that game. They should make that a movie. <laughs> Feeding Frenzy. What was Fusion Frenzy? It was like a bunch of, it was like not Mario Party in the sense of like, like it being like a board game, but then you would have mini games. Like I think it was just straight up like a mini game type game. Where like you just had all these bunch of different min- mini games you would do. Hmm. I don't remember that. Fuck it, make and it. You would like gamble. You get TV orbs, show. and then you would like put orbs in and gamble them to win the next mini game. It was a fun game. Oh, Bomberman! You're talking about? Yeah, Bomberman. <laughs> <laughs> well, this question in the same spirit as the last one from Grace: Is there an IP that you'd be excited to see adapted for the big screen or small screen? So anything, book, comic, game. That's really it. <laughs> I don't read, so... Yeah, I guess I'll go with other games. Um, I, well, I said this on the podcast before, but I think Brian K. Vaughn's saga would be a great animated adaptation similar to Invincible. Because he always said he wrote it to be unadaptable in live action, so Invincible proved sometimes the best way to adapt those stories is through animation. Yeah. And also, uh, there's a novel, Black Leopard, Red Wolf, I've mentioned this on the podcast before. Oh, who could forget? That Michael B. Jordan is adapting in live action. I think that's the wrong way to do it. I actually think that would be better served as animated because the story is huge. It's very similar to Game of Thrones. If you, Especially if you make it a movie, you have to take stuff out. And I don't want that to happen with an adaptation of this story because it's so good. But if you did it animated, you can get to every little detail. And there's a lot of them. So, But I- I'm excited to see what Michael B. Jordan ends up. Also, it's a it's an African story. It's rooted in an African mythology. And to, to have Hollywood come in and put... <laughs> like, I like Michael B. Jordan. But I would really love just like an, a true all-African cast to tackle it. But hmm. that's never going to happen with Hollywood. I'll take your word for it that it's good. Are they, like... Are it's there... a haunting... What's uh, series? What's the next hmm. anime you think they're going to try to adapt live action? That's going to fail. One Piece on Netflix. That's going to be the live action TV show adaptation. Oof. I actually had somebody sent me the script for the pilot. The script looked good, but I mean the One Piece. You know the origin. I'm familiar with it, so it's kind of hard to fuck that up. <laughs> it ends up. It all comes down to tone and atmosphere and feel and look. Are you convinced by this? And everything that we've seen prior tells us that it's going to come off as cheap and fake because it's hard to adapt anime to live action man it's <laughs> there's so many things that you can get away with in the animated form that you just can't do in live action so it's it's always it's difficult sometimes the better way it's the opposite way where you bring it to animation and you get more out of it but like even like i'm thinking about the last game uh, the last question like a game i think we tackled maybe elden ring you can make like a fucking show Oh, but, sure, dude. Or even uh, the big one, what's it fucking called? It's similar to Elden Ring. <sighs> your boy plays it all the time. Fantasy, you create your own character. Skyrim? Skyrim. Oh, Skyrim. Yeah, I think Skyrim's got some potential. Ah, that's one game I never got into. You and everybody love ra- Skyrim. Everybody raves about you it. You would lose Skyrim's 500 good. hours to Skyrim in a, in a weekend. Oh, by the way, kind of bullshit that if you have a PS4 that you can't play Harry Potter until April... <laughs> hey man, it's not all you're broke. Sp- yeah, <laughs> spit in my face and call me broke boy. You know, like wait, get it on it, Switch. It's available already on Switch. I'm pretty sure it is. I already pre-ordered it for the fucking <laughs> the PS4, so it's like I got to drop a buck sixty on. I wonder where Teddy bought it. Because I know he he's playing it. Yeah, he's got the PS5. F- motherfucker got into Ravenclaw. 
There's no fucking who the hell did his mom bribe this time? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, the old county quidditch. Yo, oh, yeah, you know, good thing he doesn't listen to the pods because that would cut him fucking deep. Well, he knows it's not true. Wait, or did maybe, he pick or Ravenclaw, he? or do you, do you get selected? No, it? apparently he gives you the whole, like, you can choose bullshit. Mm. I, I think like it's both story, options, yeah. right? It's kind of like a, like a 2K. Yeah, or he like could a, send you like a Madden. Firm, firm believer, Madden, my career. Whatever you pick. If you pick Hufflepuff, you're a Hufflepuff. But if you pick Gryffindor, you're not a Gryffindor. No, you're a Hufflepuff. <laughs> and if you pick Slytherin, you, yeah, you're, you're a Hufflepuff also. Slytherins don't pick Slytherins. They're just like, oh, I'm edgy. I'm... I'm I'm, you know, whatever. I'm I'm a Slytherin. No, you're fucking not. You ain't built that yeah, way. Yeah, you have to be told you're a Slytherin. Yeah. Or you're just like, oh, yeah, obviously I'm a fucking Slytherin. I'm not going to tell the stupid ass hat. It's like you're just trying too hard to be Slytherin. Same thing with Gryffindor. Like, oh, I'm courageous. I'm I'm just like Harry. No, you're fucking not. Get in Hufflepuff. Yeah, would, but then I should be the sorting hat. Like, get the fuck out of my face. I would sort the fuck out of these people. <laughs> It's like, yeah, we'll take a consideration into consideration. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll be in Gryffindor. You thought. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? You think so? <laughs> oh, Get back oh it's so cute. You think you're a Gryffindor? <laughs> Get to the back of the line. We'll try this again. Oh, you think you're a Slytherin because you called your mom a bitch because she took away your PlayStation? Aw. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure enough. But I like that. Like, I, I don't think that you should have the option to pick. No, what's the sorting hat even for? Yeah, what, what do you tell the hat? I want to be here and there. What does he no. do in the off season? He rests. He just hangs out with Dumbledore. Apparently, yeah, he's just in. <laughs> he flips him a cracker. You know how stressful it is picking p- students to what fucking house they're in. That ain't easy, man. Yeah, when you put him on your head, he also experiences your entire life. Your life flashes before the Sorting Hat's l- eyes. Mm. That hat would just drop <laughs> and have a seizure if it went on my head. <laughs> sorting Hat seizure. Oh, boy. This question here from Versace. What's everybody's zodiac sign? Well, mine's a Taurus, and I am compatible with a full moon. I'm extremely stubborn. Sorry, I was making fun of my... uh, Okay. I was was making fun of somebody recently about zodiac signs. (laughs) I love that meme. It's like a... Not compatible with a Gemini. (laughs) (laughs) Do you guys believe in all that mumbo jumbo? No. You can literally take any aspect of any uh, description and apply it to your life. It's... Meant to be. Oh, yeah, that's so me. What's your sign? I'm Pisces. Yeah, that's some, See, that's some that's shit a Pisces, Pisces would say. say. Yeah, 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 no, that's <laughs> well, I didn't even know, like... <laughs> no, but that's what I just they been told, always say. I've just been told my whole life, like, I'd be like, oh, what's your birthday? And, I'm, like, March 3rd, they're like, oh, you're, you're a Pisces? I'm like, I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> Damn, I hate back that off. shit. I'm a Leo. So, uh, the only thing I know about Leos is that it's the best like, sign. Oh, my God. Young women. Leos totally say that, that they're Leos. <laughs> Oh, it's so pathetic. Yeah, no, Leos can't stop no, themselves. Well, you got a 19-year-old girlfriend. No, it's okay, I'm a Leo. No, no, I'm a Leo, that's fine. <laughs> it's just, uh, I mean... Somebody what, made the theory that maybe they outgrow Leo. And that he's just... <laughs> he's so emotionally stunted by the yeah. time they hit 25. They're like, why am I with this idiot? Maybe. It's a great spin zone. His mm. PR team probably put that out there. Okay, a couple more questions here. This one from Large Sprite. Mm, no ice. I hate soda, but that's a great name. <laughs> Best ensemble cast, movie or TV show? Ever? Yeah. Hmm. I know it's recent, but like Succession gives you three more good seasons. Like that ensemble is fucking hard to match. Yeah, fucking I mean, deep man. Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's got to be up there. The casting throughout was so well done. But yeah, I, I guess it's like ensemble when it comes to a movie, w- best cast and yeah, it's... like best casted for their roles and also best performances. I always used to say The Dark Knight. I think that's a really strong cast where everyone's perfect for their roles except Maggie Gyllenhaal. Poor girl. I mean, you could put basic on my forehead. Get a the Holly Departed. Or no, I th- actually, <laughs> The Departed's a great answer. We were just talking about that last podcast, that that's Mark Wahlberg's best role because he was cast it so well someone said it takes like this the mark of Everybody a good director wants. is yeah. making mark Wahlberg good in your movie <laughs> yeah, and everyone yeah. was saying seth mcfarlane and martin scorsese <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's so funny dude no but everyone alec baldwin's perfect for that douchebag cop role uh martin sheen for the more quiet you know, wiser cop 
uh, Leo and, uh, and Matt Damon, you know, yeah. going back and forth. So good, dude. Jackie boy. I mean, it's yeah. just... I mean... Love Jack. Yeah. He's probably the best part of that movie. I thought so, man. Yeah, he's so good. Everyone it's says it's of... overacting. No. Yeah, no, I think he's... He's so good. It's so fun. It's crazy that that's the first time him and Scorsese worked together. Don't laugh. This isn't Don't reality laugh. TV. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Well, even the side characters, I think, are fucking hilarious. Give me a fucking tuba. Get maybe, maybe not. Maybe go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, <even laughs> the, fuck that's such a great scene with the Irish guy. He's like, when they find the dead, the dead body, and they say it's an undercover cop, and he's just so like in disbelief that they found the body. It's like we think. <laughs> they did them in the marshes like what? who's walking their dog over there and that's it Shaq's like don't laugh <laughs> it's not reality <laughs> TV yeah that's a good one or even uh, what's her name it's probably her best role don't you think oh yeah uh, it escapes me <laughs> yeah. she's like in a lot of things no I can't remember her name either that's where, that's where I picture that's like and once you say it it's gonna uh, yeah no that's gonna that's gonna suck that I have to look it up. You know, it's a great one too. Vera I mean, Farmiga. Yes, I mean, it, I guess it. No, it doesn't Two really. Two fucking pills. Because they are playing themselves. But I would say uh, this is the end. <laughs> hey, that's a. <laughs> they were funny. They were. Yeah. I mean, that lineup is just fantastic. It is so good, dude. I love that movie. <laughs> but they are just playing themselves, you know. So it's but like exaggerated versions. I mean. Danny McBride, as everyone says, is nothing like that. Comedic ensembles are good, but they can be like misleading sometimes when it's like they have all these comedic actors. Oh, this movie's going to be a riot, and it just sucks. So a lot of the times they don't live up to the expectations, but yeah, that is a very funny movie. Oh, my God. We even going back to like 40-Year-Old Virgin. Like, that's a fucking cast. Yeah. And it's like all when they're up and coming, but now like looking back on it. And it's probably one of the funnier movies of the past couple decades. Anchorman is another one. Yeah. Like that that was a well, I guess a big three and then plus champ. Kevin Hart and Four Year Old Virgin might might be the funniest, like just two minutes in any comedic movie. Oh, yeah. With someone who just comes in, leaves, but leaves such a great your boy right here. Such a good amp- impact on that. <laughs> yeah, we rep the same smart tech. <laughs> hey my Willis. That and uh oh, what was the oh, fuck. I had a, another really good one. Maybe it'll come back to me, but it was very good. Oh, Django Unchained. I think you want to talk about, let's say, if Will Smith really did take that role. I think Jamie was perfect for that role. I think it was perfect, yeah. We got Jamie, Leo, Christoph Waltz, Don Johnson. Who else do we got? Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson. Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. Jonah Hill. (laughs) Yeah, Jonah 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 Hill had a nice little cameo in there. We Um, can't see. Walton Goggins. I just think they all were perfectly casted. Yeah, that's a that's a really good one. Even the Hateful Eight is a really strong cast. I wasn't crazy about that movie. Really? Yeah. I remember love me some remember we've had that conversation. I don't before. really remember. Yeah. I can never keep track of who likes what. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. You really shouldn't know that. But no, it's tough uh, with like, especially people who are on the podcast. Like, uh, I always I'm trying to think where I mix things up. Well, yeah, that I don't want to say it's bad, but that's just I think is like worst movie. Wow. I never saw Jackie Brown or... Oh, well. it de- It's that, definitely not as good as Jackie Brown. But Jackie nice. Brown, a lot of people think Jackie Brown's number one. Oh, yeah, Teddy watched Reservoir Dogs the other day for no reason at all. <laughs> it sounded like you called him Titty. <laughs> titty. That's fucked up, man. What are you trying to say? He's shaped like Charles a giant titty. Titties? I mean, the thin red line in terms of star power, it's kind of obnoxious, but it's hilarious how many famous people are in that movie. You want me to read them off? What was that movie sure. earlier this year? It wasn't Amsterdam. It wasn't Babylon. Amsterdam had a big cast. But there was another movie. It was a See How They Run. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just had an absurd cast for no reason. For that a movie was okay. That nobody saw, though. It had no marketing around it. That was because Disney put it in the fucking... Uh, one of those Fox ones? In the recycle bin. Yeah. And then you're, you, know, I mean, you have Oppenheimer that's coming out that has oh, I can't legitimately wait for Hollywood in it. Yeah, that's going to be so fun, dude. All right, I think we just ended there. I wonder what the twist <laughs> is going to be. Give me one more question. One more question? Yeah, I, it's been a while oh, well, since I've been take here. Take a sports one. Uh, cool. This one here from Gorilla the Conqueror. Oh. If Kevin Durant doesn't win in Phoenix, how will you view his legacy? Oh, legacy talk. Yeah, we were just having this talk. I am so sick of it when it comes to the NBA. I mean, listen, no one's better than LeBron, so I don't even care anymore. 
Kevin Durant, like you look at him, the stats, the eye test, he, at the very least, he's one of the five most talented players in NBA history. I don't, I, I just don't care anymore. Like if he wins, <laughs> congratulations. If he doesn't. I think it does more for Chris Paul. Yeah, Chris Paul's the one who, where once again, he's still a Hall of Famer. But because of our obsession with championships, if he doesn't get one, people are going to keep him out of the top five. They're just going to do it. The rant leaving Golden State, looking back, is probably one of the dumbest things anyone can do. Isn't it he funny how his two cruising. worst decisions <laughs> were going to Golden State and then leaving Golden State? Yeah. He would have been fucking cruising. But he, no one's going to care after you have five rings. He understood, man. He knew that. Just for a, the but sake of But he won finals argument. MVP both times, and we would continue winning finals MVPs. But people will always look at Golden, and that's the problem with it, because he's jumped on four teams so Do far. Do people look at Dwayne Wade anymore as that Heat team? No. No one cares anymore. It's LeBron. No one even thinks back, and no one even once We're just so in the moment now, and it's so fresh in our minds. In 20 years, no one's going to give a fuck. The same way we don't go back... Uh, some people do to dissect their arguments, but for the most part, we take everything at face value. You have six rings, you have six rings. No one's going back and looking at, well, this person was hurt and that's a fake ring and all that. We just do that in the now because we have nothing better to do. Just for sake of argument, I, I actually think that people will argue it even more because now there's more resources in order to support your argument with new numbers and you can access these numbers at any given moment that you numbers, want. Numbers, just watch, watch the game. Kevin Durant is the most talented player. I agree. I just said for sake of argument. Best scorer. Like, I don't care if he wins one more or seven more. Like, that's... But you have, to, you have to at least agree a little bit that if he does not win here, that it's, it's horrible. It's horrible for his legacy. I don't, I don't think, think it's so. horrible, but I think that... Because this team is stacked. I think that's where people sometimes overrate the legacy talk for a lot of people he's in the 10 to 15 range so if he wants to crack a lot of people's top 10s he needs to win right. if he doesn't he's always going to stay there you'll have some people who will say listen just based on the talent alone i'm going to put him top 10 top five so it, it's like with like steph curry versus durant when you pin their two legacies up against each other that's where all the legacy talk kind of becomes what are we even arguing here yeah. because he won the two finals mvps I think most people would say, the majority would say he's was better than Steph Curry on those teams. Yeah. And he's a better player than Steph Curry, but Curry ranks higher now on the all-time list for most people because he's got the four rings it's and he's so the best stupid. point guard we've seen since Magic Johnson. But the one thing that sticks out is that Curry's been with one team the whole time. I, that's another, uh, who gives a shit? I actually think that plays a, a, a significant role. But it doesn't change who is a basketball player. No, but there's still the same level of talent and good at basketball, depending if you play on one team or seven fucking teams. And it doesn't matter. It's all a moot point because Luke is going to be the GOAT in 20 years anyway. <laughs> it's a weird way to say uh, Victor Wembanyama. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I checked the stats last night. Shooting 28% for three. Get the fuck out of here. Luca. No. Oh, Victor? Victor. Oh, my God. He's a baby still. <laughs> Who cares? Not my number one overall pick. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. If the Knicks had that big, you'd be ecstatic. Oh, my God. No, Luka's numbers are fucking absurd right now for this young in his career. And he's still, what, 23? Well, it's funny because if he keeps that pace, he could get the scoring record. But I think that's why it's going to... I, I don't think it's unbreakable, but you need to have that sort of same commitment that LeBron has. And nobody's proven that they can be this good at 38. He's This is new territory for any NBA athlete. So... But if the game was played the way it is now, back when LeBron was LeBron, like he was averaging 30 a game. In a slow era. One of the yeah. slowest eras in NBA history, 2006. It's amazing what Kobe, LeBron, and Iverson were able to do that year. The fact that they were both over 30. Yeah. But I don't know, man. You saw KG and Paul Pierce calling LeBron the GOAT. <laughs> the energy's shifting, baby. Things are a changing. Yeah, that was. KG, I. I... I had a feeling was going to turn over a little bit now that he's like in the media and all this stuff and blah, 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 blah. But like Paul Pierce and I feel like him and LeBron legitimately hated each other. Oh, yeah. You know, like I thought there was like serious beef there. And for him to say that, I was like, okay. The yep. reason why I love Draymond Green Let's close. and will always love Draymond Green is when he chirped Paul Pierce. About Amazing. Having the farewell tour. <laughs> 
It's one of the all-time you like that. great chirps of all time. They don't love you like Kobe. You thought you was Kobe. <laughs> That is so fucking funny, dude. Paul Pierce looks so sad after he said that. <laughs> yeah. There truly just is a different level to it, you know? Yeah. Which is crazy, because he's like one of the most clutch players. Oh, yeah, dude. You know? I'm always defending Paul Pierce, and he is an asshole, and he does think too much of himself. But that's he gets a lot of eye test uh, praise from me, where it's like, I've seen him go head-to-head with LeBron. I've seen him go head-to-head with Kobe. Where he's hitting step backs, he's driving to the rim, he's setting people up. He could pass, he could shoot, he could. He was a five tool player, if you know that applies to NBA. So, no, he's one of the, one of the greats. But not, <laughs> he talks like when uh, Jalen Rose five. dressed him down when Paul Pierce said he was better all time than Wade, and no, <laughs> Jalen yeah, Rose just went through their resumes. <laughs> so funny, dude. Talk about being humbled, man. Oh, <laughs> you know how bad that's got to hurt. Michelle truly Beadle does was ad-libbing in the background. <laughs> he does. Yeah, if I was Paul Pierce, I would just be like, whatever. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, at a certain point, you just got to be like, look, I was one of the better players of all time. One of the best Celtics of all time. Got my rings. Stop hating. Look at us defending Paul Pierce because he said LeBron's the goat. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking nasty. All right, guys, that does it for he the Nerd 2 podcast. an injury. <laughs> no, no. Well, he admitted he had to shit. That's... Makes it so much better. No, he's faking that, too. No, well, he, no, he said he shit his pants. He, that's 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 a weird way. That's perfume. He faked an injury because he wanted his Willis Reed moment, and no one will ever convince me otherwise. <laughs> his Willis Reed moment, he like that was in his head. That I, sw- dude, I, there's, there's no, one- no way at that course and that at that point in the game that would be going through his mind. Let me fake an injury Pre-game. in he, game he, he one of the, the NBA thing. Finals. Yeah. You have to be a... Well, maybe. Yeah. All right, guys. That does it for this episode of the Nerd Suit Podcast. Thank you for listening. We will be back next week. Nash, thanks for joining us. Aaron, you're always here, so... Peace! I'm Bo Oliver. Later, bro. Go listen to episodes Bo Oliver Podcast on Patreon. No. Fuck you, man. Wow, that was probably our best review yet. Hey, guys. Aaron the Nerd Suit Monkey here with a brief shameless plug before we end the video. Do you ever feel like you don't have an adequate amount of nerd soup in your life? Like you're going to bed hungry and yearning for the nonsensical yet entertaining nutrients our podcasts provide? Well, we've come up with the perfect solution. The Nerd Soup Fan Question Podcast, exclusively available to our Patreon supporters. You can sign up now by visiting patreon.com slash nerdsoup, and for the price of only $1 per month, you'll receive exclusive access to our weekly podcast, where we answer your questions that don't make it to the main show. And while you're there, you can check out the other rewards we offer to our patrons, like stick Stickers, mugs, t-shirts, behind-the-scenes footage, and appearing in the credits at the end of our videos. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Roll the names of the nerds who make Nerd Soup possible. The reason why the crypto crash didn't send our lives spiraling down a black hole of no return. Alright, I'll stop talking so you can listen to this jazzy-ass music while checking if Bo spelt your name wrong in the credits.